Hey, welcome back to part seven of my journey towards my Bachelor's of Science Information Technology degree from Western Governors University. So today's episode is going to be all about the second part of the A plus certification. So officially, that's the CompTIA uh, 220-1002 exam. OK, so if you remember in the previous uh, episode, we talked about all about part one, which was uh, the fundamental exam, which was much more hardware, PC, laptop, printer, kind of uh, cloud, stuff like that, uh, infrastructure type stuff. This is all about applications. So the actual exam uh, or the course in um, WGDU is actually called uh, IT Applications, I believe. Yes. And uh, so obviously it fits nicely into the second part of the uh, A-plus exam. So let me tell you a little bit about my pre-prep work. Um, I used the WGU's um, uh, you know, learning material, which was again was very good and comprehensive. Uh, they have quite a lot in there, so they have uh, generally basically chapter by chapter lessons, so you can basically go through it. If you're completely new and need to start from scratch, you can go chapter by chapter. If you're kind of a little bit more like me and you have a pretty good feel for the material, but you're, there's a few areas that you need to you know polish, you can do that as well. As long as you know the objective number and that kind of stuff, you can basically go straight to it, which is, was very good as well. The chapters and lessons as well, one of the cool things about WDU is as you go through, they kind of test your knowledge to make sure you're not just skimming it and not understanding. You can actually, uh, you know, they'll ask you questions to re reaffirm what you're learning. Uh, they have performance labs. Um, I've got to be honest with you, I never opened that, but sounds good, right? I mean, you can get in there and, and, and practice in the labs. Uh, they have practice tests. Uh, there was five of them, all pretty good, uh, each between... 70 and 85 questions, I think. So it just gives you a gauge of where you are, you know, if you understand the material. And then when you're ready to go, they have a post assessment, which basically you can take that. If you score over 90%, I think is the number, uh, you can then request a exam voucher from your uh, your teacher of that class. And as long as they see that you pass that post assessment, they'll they'll send you the, the uh, an email with the code. So, I used all of that. I did the practice exams. I also had, I think I told you before in the last video, uh, Udemy is an online site that does a lot of learning material. I brought Jason Dion's uh, practice uh, material for this exam and it was really good. Um, so I got it on sale. It was 12 or $13. dollars um, It regular is like a hundred and something, but they have sales quite often, especially around the holidays and things like that. So with Labor Day coming up here in the United States, if you wanted to get that material, I bet you it would be cheaper this weekend or very soon. And honestly, the biggest tip I can give you is Jason Dion's um, examples of the PBQs were very, very good and very close to the real thing. Um, he breaks it down into these videos. There's like eight or nine different topics. And honestly, I wouldn't say they were exactly the same because they weren't, but they were very close. So uh, I would recommend it's well worth the 10 bucks or $12, whatever it's cost, because the information is really good. Anyway, more about that in a little bit later. So um, if you remember, I was trying to get this done by the end of the month, uh, which unfortunately I wasn't able to do. I was looking to take the test, uh, like I say, September or late August. Uh, but what happened was I was ready to go. But what I found was when I got my exam voucher, I logged in to schedule the proctored exam like I did previously, and there was just no available exams. Now, that's the first time I've seen that. Normally, that you when you log in, there's normally, you could do it that day sometimes, and there wasn't anything. So the, the closest exam I could get was like four days out, which was Wednesday the 2nd. So basically, that was frustrating. I was kind of ready to go four or five days before, and I had to wait. So I don't know how you learn, but I was studying and I was memorizing and I was basically ready to go and I had to go and wait that bit longer. So it was kind of frustrating. I guess in some ways it was good because I could just keep reviewing it, but I really wanted just to get it out of the way, you know, because my memory, I just forget some of the stuff. So anyway, I scheduled the exam um, Wednesday, uh, like I said, 10, 15 in the morning. So it was good. I, you know, I was wide awake by that point. Um, my my mentor said to me the reason why I had to wait so many days was because it was the end of the month. So another tip for you is while you're working on your schedule and figuring this all out, if you don't want to wait a long time to take the exam, I would suggest that you try to schedule it like in the middle of the month. And that's kind of makes sense because that's what I did the last one, part one. And I was able to get straight in there. 
So uh, I guess everybody waits till the end of the month or people are just starting the WGU courses and maybe they're scheduling them. So just a little tip for you there. If you don't want to wait, schedule early, middle of the month. So exam, it's uh, 80 questions. It's out of 900. Uh, you have to score 700 or more to pass. Um, so last exam, part one was only 675. So part two, for some reason, you have to get 700. Um, for my test, I had uh, four PBQs, which are the simulation type questions at the very beginning, and then 76 uh, multiple choice questions. So I want to help you out here a little bit. I'm going to give you a little bit of, uh, I can't tell you exactly what's on the test, of course, because there are, you know, you sign a non-disclosure act and NDA when you um, sign in and log in and, uh, for the exam. But I can give you some ideas of the kind of questions and things you should study. So hopefully that's helpful. So for me, for my PBQs to start with, I had um, a couple of them about help desk type issues. So I gave you an example of a, like a help desk system, like a service desk kind of a ticket in system. And there was a couple of issues and basically you had to troubleshoot the issue, look at the screenshots, things like that, and figure out what the problem is. And honestly, it wasn't too difficult. You then look, select a little drop down, say what the problem was, and then you close out the ticket and then you move on to the next one. So you know, yeah, I had a couple of questions like that. And like I said, Jason Dion's simulations similar as well. Uh, next up, I had a, a question like a like a, a bit more tough assimilation, but it was kind of like a disk partition, disk partitioning uh, kind of question where you go into disk manager and you partition a new drive. Again, I'm not going to give you too many details about what how, what the drive names were and the numbers and stuff like that, but and the type of drive. But that's very common. Again, Jason Dion demonstrates that in the PBQs in his material. So again, really worth looking at. Now, I'm not saying you're going to get those ones, but you know, it's possible. Uh, I also had some another one about another kind of support. It was like an IM type message with, you know, and you're basically supporting people. So a lot of it was just troubleshooting, recognizing the issue, fixing it, and then some other maybe a, a random Windows type configuration issue, things like that. So the uh, multiple choice questions um, had a lot on operating systems. So make sure you know the difference between Windows, Mac, Unix, that kind of stuff, and the different features within those operating systems. Uh, you know, like the, the, the different tools, like, uh, you know, what does a disk defragment to do, or uh, um, um, what's task uh, viewer, uh, um, event viewer, sorry, not task viewer. Uh, what does task manager do? How do you stop and start services? Um, how do you... Um, uh, how do you display um, um, errors? Uh, what's the blue screen of death? And how do you troubleshoot that uh, Windows? Um, I had questions about what's the difference between uh, 8.1, Windows 8.1 and 10.0. Not exactly that question, but similar. Basically, differences in the different versions. Um, and it's the same with Unix and also uh, um, Mac. So just know the different versions and the different... and then. That's really important because you will get some questions like that. Uh, I also had uh, command questions. Now, I, I personally never had to actually type out a command. Now, I heard that there are some PBQs like that, but I didn't. But you do get quite a few questions about what does this command do? Or if you were going to try and do this uh, with a uh, on a Mac, what was the command to do that? Or a Unix system? Or what does this do on Windows? So know your different, yeah, different commands. And again, that's all in the course material. Um, Support questions again, just general um, common sense type things. You know, a customer calls up angry with you. How do you deal with that situation? Things like that, you know. I also had a couple of questions on a change management request, which is basically, you know, when you when you have to go through the approval press, uh, uh, pr uh, process, documentation of a change. And then, you know, questions like, you know, if there's a problem, what do you do? What's the back out process? What's the final step? It's kind of like, I mean, if you guys do this for a living, you probably know what I'm talking about. But the the, the material is pretty, uh, pretty clear. And if you learn that, you'll be fine. Uh, the other big thing I can tell you about is troubleshooting steps for just about anything that's in the uh, exam objective. So troubleshooting phones. So, for example, my phones are overheating or uh, my phone's running slowly. The different steps for that, they're quite common questions. Again, all in the exam uh, study material. Uh, boot issues, my computer won't boot or it's... It's it boot into the wrong operating system or something along those lines. So understand how to troubleshoot basically Windows type issues. Um, what else do I have? Uh, 
She talks about utilities, uh, malware. That's malware. So you're going to get questions on viruses, trojans, worms. Know the, know the different types of attacks. Uh, what a botnet is. What a um, you know what war driving is. What uh, I don't know. Uh, what's ransomware? If you know all those kind of things, you're going to be fine. You're going to get a couple of questions probably on that, and um, and then the steps to remove it. So for this, there's a seven step process for removing ransomware, for example, or sorry for for a malware. So know those steps because you might get a question like, I did this, this, and this. What's the next step on the removal process? I'm pretty sure you're going to get a couple of those. So if you know those, memorize the seven steps. And again, Jason Dion's material is really good because he kind of gives you ways to remember that in a kind of uh, mnemonics or whatever you call it, way of remembering the steps. So again, well worth investing in that. So let me give you the biggest piece of advice. Download the CompTIA exam objectives, period. Because what I found was um, I had a lot of questions in the material that simply went on the exam objectives, like the test exams. They asked me questions about stuff that wasn't even in the exam objectives. So the point is they can only test you on what's on the exam objectives. So you go out to CompTIA, you go to their website, you choose the course and you request it and they email it to you. It's a PDF. Now, they're not going to give you the answers, but what they do is they break it down section by section. And they tell you the types of things that they're going to ask you about and the different subjects. So as long as you can look at this exam objective and you can say, OK, I know what that is. I know what that is. I know what that is. And you can go through this thing. And for this exam, it actually isn't too bad. And at the end of it, there's a whole bunch of acronyms that they might use as well on the test. So as long as you I mean, there's a lot. But as long as you have an idea what those different acronyms, are, you should be fine because you'll know what to expect. Honestly, I wish I'd done that earlier for some of the other comp tier exams, because what you'll find is in these exams is they're a mile wide and an inch deep. And there's an awful lot of memorization. So what I found was I was memorizing stuff I didn't really need to memorize because it wasn't on the exam objectives. So that's my big piece of advice. If anybody wants the exam objectives, I've already got them for both uh, 1001 and 1002. Just send me a message and I'll gladly email them to you. Because like I said, they're not confidential. They're these are from CompTIA themselves, and they're so useful. So I was really able to really narrow down the stuff that I was studying for and trying to memorize. So anyway, good news is I did pass. Um, I scored 756, I believe. So over the 700 pass mark. I personally found this exam much easier than the first one. And I think it's just simply because of my background. I mean, I'm a I'm a former Windows Server engineer. So there was a lot of things I kind of already had a really good idea of. Um, so it, this was easier. However, I will say I, I followed the same process as I've done for every other CompTIA uh, exam and what they kind of recommend in the forums. And I skipped the PBQs, went straight to the multiple choice. But what I found was on this exam is I found the questions were easier. Sorry, the answers were easier, but the questions were more convoluted. They were bigger and longer and more complex. And they deliberately try and start off one way and give you a whole bunch of information that really you may or may not need. And then they suddenly change gears and then they ask you a straightforward question at the end. So what you're doing is you're reading the question really carefully. And sometimes you're thinking, oh, did I read that right? And you end up rereading it just to make sure. They are There are some trick questions in it. So what I would say to you is you need to take your time, but also you you have to be aware of the time. So what happened for me is the 90 minutes went by in a flash and I wasn't really paying attention. Now in the top right hand corner of the screen, there'll be a little clock and it'll be ticking down, a bit like Mission Impossible. And um, they don't give you warnings. And what happened was I got to about 12, 13 minutes towards the end of the exam because I was really being careful with the multiple choice questions and I hadn't done the PBQs yet. So, of course, when you're under the clock, you start to panic a bit. And that's what I did. So I did do the PBQs. But honestly, um, I didn't get a chance to really look at them as closely as I'd like. So I'm, I'm hoping I did OK. Obviously, I passed, but I may have got some of that wrong simply because I was panicking. I saw a minute left and I had one left and I was, you can imagine. So anyway, so passed. Good. That's another four credit units gone out the way. So uh, like I said, didn't meet my... Uh, goal of the 1st of September, but not far off 2nd of September. Um, I spoke to my me my mentor and she's gone ahead and added geography and spreadsheets up for me next. Um, I'm hoping to take about a week on each. So maybe in two weeks time, um, I'll have another two classes down, but that's my goal. Anyway, that's pretty much it for today. I'm sorry this one's a long video, but I know these exam courses are, are these are the ones people are asking me questions about. So um, I, I want to make sure I give you as much information as possible. So hopefully that's helpful. 
Good luck with your exams. Um, like I said, contact me if you have any questions. I see that the numbers are growing in our subscription and our views. So it's really nice. I really appreciate that. I mean, I'm not doing this for money or anything like this. I'm just trying to do this to help people. So I'm glad that in some way it might be helping somebody. But anyway, um, stay safe out there in that crazy world we're living right now. I hope everybody's healthy and I'll talk to you hopefully with good news in maybe a week or so. All right. Thank you so much. Take care.